Never come back here again, you broken, useless woman. If I see you around my house ever again, I'm calling the police on you. And then you could be taken away and turned into a proper adult in the society. Although, I wish I could have done that to you this time, but then I would have had to explain that to my son. No matter what you say, I think it's you who should have the police called on them. You just punched me in the face! What kind of person thinks it's okay to punch a younger woman in the face for no good reason? What's wrong with me punching a supposed robber in the face and kicking them out of my house? I know what you were here for, and I'm not gonna let your hitting attentions take a hold of my family. A robber? I am your son's fiancé for crying out loud. Why would I ever want to rob my own fiancé's dad? Why would I want to rob anyone for that matter? I was just there to come and meet you, yet you stepped out of line the moment I came in and didn't even talk to me first about what you were suspecting. Who cares at this point whether or not you're my son's fiancé or not? I don't even approve of you marrying him. Gosh. Why did he have to end up with a woman like you? He has so much potential, and I've shown him so many other women that would fall for him in a heartbeat. All he has to do is just listen to me, and he'll have a much better woman that he can marry, who I know we can trust to be a good young wife for everyone. What do you mean, why has he ended up with a woman like me? All I said was that I grew up with a single mother and that she was the only one to really raise me while I was going through school. I never did anything to you that would have come off as rude or hostile, right? And I definitely wasn't robbing you of anything. You bringing yourself and that past of yours into my house is very rude of you, actually. All right. My family is very famous, and we have a name to uphold in this city, in this state even. And seeing someone like you trying to sneak into my family is very recognizable. I've seen women like you before that try and get into rich and famous families, with the purpose of leeching off them like a nasty parasite. And not just me, but so have a lot of my colleagues as well. And if they see me letting a roach like you into my house again, they will begin to think differently of me in a far worse way. I'm sure whoever the man was that impregnated your mom, he's lucky to have run away from you all. <laughs> he probably knew at first glance that you and your mother were both going to end up as useless members of this great society. Huh? So in other words, you're just judging me harshly for being from a single mother household and are using that as reason to push me away? I have to say, you've made a situation that could very well put you behind bars, Geoff. This could have gone a lot better had you just expressed your concerns with me in the first place and let me explain myself a bit more to you so that you could understand who I am. But that probably wouldn't have made a difference anyway in the end. The law doesn't care about what I've done to protect myself from a robber like you. Heck, if I had a weapon on me, I could have done you in and there would be no one against me because I had to protect my son in this house. Ah, and another thing. All you moneyless people are truly thieves. You only live to try and get into us rich people's lives and take what we worked so hard for, right? <laughs> well, today our interaction has taught me a very good lesson. I'm going to need to invest in a better house security now that I see more rats like you on the horizon trying to dig their way into my money. Man, I'm actually amazed by you. You must be talented in talking and regurgitating such garbage all the time. Today you've really made yourself look like a textbook example of a greedy villain from some movie, and that's kind of hilarious, actually. A villain? I'm the hero of this world. It's because of people like me, who have bled for the position they're in, that you lowlives and you moneyless people have the chance to even be able to live. You're the ones that get to have unemployment because you're too lazy and useless to get a job. And that all comes from the money I make. And you think, after living off all of that I've sacrificed for this world, 
You could come in and become part of my family now? Stop trying to make me laugh. This company of mine employs thousands of people that are below me. And if you wanted, I'd give you a job as well in the company. But I know you'd never be thankful for my kindness. So I'd rather you stay away from the greatness I offer this world. I have a job right now, and it's working for someone that's a bit less egotistical than you. And me wanting to marry your son wasn't me trying to come into your family with any bad intentions, actually. I just wanted to marry your son, Ben, because I love him and he means the world to me. That's the same thing. You marrying my son will make you a part of my family and have access to all my things that I've worked hard for. Who do you think will allow you to do that? It won't be me, I promise you that. Ben has been in countless newspapers with articles all written about how amazing of a young elite man he is. He is a star, shining bright in this city of mine. And you have no right taking him off his pedestal with whatever emotions you have for him. If he's going to be swayed by love, it better be to a woman that I approve of. Someone that's a celebrity. Or comes with wealth. But Ben wants to be married to me as well. He doesn't want to be with a celebrity or some stuck-up rich girl. We've already talked about all of this before and about the reason why he's choosing to be with me over all the countless other beautiful and wealthy women he could be with. And his reasoning was that someone like me didn't grow up in wealth or as someone that's a natural born model and that's what makes someone like me down to earth and special to him. I don't care about what he thinks he wants. I am his father and not only his father but his CEO as well. Everything I say to him, he must abide by. And that's because everything I say is correct. He has an image to uphold for his family. And that image cannot be tainted by someone that the rest of this world's high society doesn't deem important. Do you understand? Really? You're that important and powerful of a man then that everything you say is right? I am. But I'm sure a lowlife like you would never be able to understand my power. I do not approve of the marriage between my elite son and some lowlife who was only raised by her mother. If my punch to your face has helped you understand that, then get lost, you moneyless thief. But my mom is the chairman of your company. You're a lying piece of trash. <laughs> nice try, but you'll never be able to get me to say sorry to you. All right, I understand. It seems that this man is not the kind of person I'd assumed he'd be when making him my CEO. For a while now, he's been doing a decent job at what he's been tasked with, but I never really knew him well enough to say that I've seen something like this coming from him. That's what it seems, though, Mom. I was surprised by how badly he treated me. I've never even been treated that badly in my life, let alone been punched. I get that he's got a huge misunderstanding of my situation and everything, but for him to take it so far that he'd physically hit me is just mind-boggling to me. What has Ben been saying about this? I'm sure after what he had to witness, he's in a pretty tough spot with his dad. For the longest time now, he's struggled in dealing with his dad, actually. Ever since he was born, his dad made it very clear that Ben couldn't have a life of his own and that he was the only one who could make choices for him. That's why originally I was going to introduce myself and ask his dad to allow me to marry his son. I tried my best to sell to him that I would be a great wife to his son and him when I married into the family. But I think me saying that I've only been raised by you led him to believe there's something wrong with me? And that he's not the man that'll allow anyone with a perceived imperfection to be with his perfect and elite son. So much for that now, and I regret that I ever brought anything about myself up to him. If he was going to be that upset about it, I should have just lied to him to get his approval and then after the marriage took Ben as far away as I could from him. I'm sure Ben's pretty upset by this as well. I myself never saw Geoff as being that sort of hideous man. This is my fault for letting him think he could get away with such a thing. 
Maybe the position of CEO is too much for him, and he thinks that in that position he's something better than everyone else and above the law, which really scares me. But him becoming a CEO does kind of make him a big deal, right? I mean, he's in charge of a lot of your company now, and without someone in that position, you'd have a very hard time keeping your company under control. So there was no helping him from being corrupted by power and the name he has now. He must have done something for the company that made you trust him, and that means it's fine letting him stay in that position. However, it would be nice for him to go to one or two ethics classes in the near future. No matter how good he's doing at his job, if he has a terrible personality, then he's not worth being in the company. If this is how he's acted out towards you, then I'm sure a lot of the employees within the company have felt the same kind of wrath. I'm going to start a very thorough investigation into him and have him fired at the end of it. I want to know what others in the company think of him, and I want to see what else he's done that I'd never guessed he'd do. That way I'll have all the evidence stacked against him, just in case he thinks he can try and fight me in this company on my decision. And also, punching my own daughter like that, I cannot allow that sort of behavior. I bet he'd never have done something like that if I came along with you to meet him. Can you make sure to take pictures of your face and everything that's bruised up or swollen so that we can use the pictures later as even more evidence? I just want to make sure we have everything covered before taking care of that gross pile of garbage. I'm fine though, Mom. He actually sucks at throwing punches, and so that last one was like taking a pillow to the face. I get that you need to do something about him, and I do want you to make sure he pays for his way of thinking. But above the physical pain I feel right now, having to see Ben as sad as he is right now is heartbreaking to me. He was the one that brought me along to meet his dad, and now he feels some sort of responsibility for what's happened. I've told him that he doesn't need to feel sorry, but every time he sees my black eye, he starts to cry a lot. You have a black eye now, too? Make sure that you start putting ice around it to help it all go away soon. And as for you and Ben, I think you need to go have a long talk about this with him and explain that he really doesn't have to feel any sort of responsibility for what happened. I'm not sure even he thought his father could stoop as low as he did. And I'll make sure not to step into that. It's your guys' decision. You're old enough now and at that point in your life where you need to be there for him and comfort him when he's at his weakest. I'm sure what would really make him happy is talking all this through after he's done crying. Yeah, alright. I'll do that. Just know that I myself feel sorry for never noticing the true man that's been G off. So don't worry about him anymore. I'll take care of him for you. And I'll make sure he gets to see all the damage he's caused by acting like an entitled child. Just focus on your soon-to-be husband. I totally understand now why Ben has hated his dad so much. The only thing is, no matter what his dad does to him, he always seems to want to stay by his dad's side. I really don't want him to think that he has to be tethered to his dad anymore and that he can leave whenever he wants because he's an adult. Ben, he still wants to get married to you even now, right? Of course. No matter what anyone has to say about us, we know that we'll be at our happiest when we get married. For example, even if you were against us, we'd still get married. I know you never would be, but if you were, I'd go as far as cutting ties with you in order to marry Ben. That's how much I love him, Mom. That kind of stubbornness is just like me, Isabel. I think so. So no matter what that idiot Geoff says to me, we'll be fine. Actually, it's kind of fun being picked on by him. Geoff really does try to go all out, making me seem like some kind of a monster at times. But he ends up sounding like a gosh darn fool in doing so. <laughs> Even if it's fun now, just make sure to take care of yourself around him. That sort of mental and physical harassment that he's trying to do to you... You can only bear it for so long, so we need to make sure to handle it before you run out of strength. I'm worried about you, but I know you can handle yourself. I'll be fine, Mom. I'm just like you, right? Making me pretty dang strong. You've always been on your own, and I've learned a lot from you being a strong single mother that raised me. And so, because of what you've taught me, I'm not going to lose to some pussy of a man. 
I'm sorry. I'm sure that I put you through a lot of tough experiences when you were younger. Also, I bet there were plenty of times growing up that you felt that you were all alone in this world. There were times where I was lonely, but I'm still happy that I have you as my mom. You are so kind, yet strong, and for the longest time now, I've wanted to become someone like you. You really are a mother that I can brag about, Mom. Ben grew up with a mother and father and always had someone around him, but I feel that he's even lonelier now than I was back then. Thank you, Isabel. I'm happy to hear that. And I hope that soon we can help Ben escape that monster for good. We will. And you don't have to thank me. <laughs> me being able to say all these nice things about you is what makes me such a cool daughter, right? <laughs> saying something that can make you that happy without even having to think about it. I'm actually really happy to have you as my daughter, though. I honestly don't know what to say sometimes that'll show you how fortunate I am to have you. Don't worry about it. Sorry if I made you feel as though you had to praise me. I know that you're happy to have me, and I feel the same about having you. Thank you always, Mom. No, thank you always, Isabel. When this is all over, how about we all take some time off? Ben, yourself, and I go somewhere relaxing for a little while. That would be wonderful, Mom. Gee off, I have something I'd like to talk about for a moment. Is that okay with you? Well, if it isn't the chairman. What's been going on? You know that anytime you need to talk, you could come stop by my office and chat. But anyway, has something happened? Yes, something has happened. Geoff, do you recall anything? Recall anything? No, the company has been doing very well lately, so nothing outside the origin area has happened here. You should be quite aware that our company is doing much better, as a matter of fact, with me in charge. Is that so? Well, has anything happened outside the company? No, I have been having a splendid life outside my work that I'm very proud of. But, to be honest, I consider anything outside my life in the office my second shift of work, as I'm always on the clock. A splendid life. I see. So then you'd consider that your splendid life would also involve punching women in the face? Huh? Uh, what the hell are you talking about? Seems you did quite the number on my daughter. What? Uh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm not really sure what you're talking about at this moment. My daughter, Isabel. She happened to stop by your house to introduce herself and talk with you about how she'd be marrying your son. But I've been told by her that things didn't go anywhere close to plan and you did something rather unthinkable. I've also made sure to talk with your son about this, so please do not say that you've forgotten about this. That... what can I say? Tell me right now, Geoff. What did you end up doing to my daughter? You're, you're wrong. What happened was... well, she... she was... She was talking back to me very rudely, and I... But say that I punched her in her face is not true. I'm sure all I did was tap her on the shoulder or something for that. If someone were to punch you in the face, would you allow that? I'm being serious right now. I'm sure that all of this could have been avoided in some manner, but saying that I punched her? Well then, what's this recording that I have? Huh? No, no that's... This is the recording that Isabel took when she was around you. And you can hear very clearly the sound of your fist hitting her cheekbone, and her then falling to the ground. And I have your son as a witness to all of this happening to her. So what the hell did you plan to do after all this went down? You have my son as a witness? What has Ben even told you about this? He told me that his dad had punched Isabel in the face. He then followed that by saying that it's his fault this all happened and that he's sorry. Are you not embarrassed as a father to have your son be the one apologizing for your necessary actions? That backstabbing idiot. Well, what he's told you is all false. I'm sure that she may have fallen over when I ran into her, but I never actually punched her in the face. 
You told me just a second ago it was only a tap on her shoulder. It's because of my son saying a bunch of BS to you that everything spun out of control for a second. To be real with you, if I'd known that she was your daughter... So you're saying that if she wasn't my daughter, it'd be acceptable to physically assault her like that? Punching her in the face and giving her a black eye? The, that's not what I meant by that exactly. But I do not approve of them both getting married now. I mean, I have the right to choose who is going to marry my son, since he's the one that will be getting my position next, right? Stop trying to change the issue here. You said some very inappropriate things to your son's fiance and then proceeded to punch her in the face. I know that for a fact. So let's continue talking about that. But, but well, this is all... You've got it all wrong. Really, I think I've been set up. I never imagined you were this pathetic of a man. As of today, you are no longer going to be the CEO anymore. Huh? Get all your things together and then get out of this building. Hold on for a second. This is all strange, right? Do you not know how much I've sacrificed for the sake of this company already? And you're the one that chose to sacrifice all of that yourself. Now be a man and accept your fate. But, but... I have made my choice with you and it will not be changed. You should also understand that kind of mentality well enough, right, Geoff? I... I understand. I'll allow it. I did in fact punch Isabella in the face by accident. And as for my son, well... I'm really sorry for what's happened. You think I'm going to forgive you because you allow my daughter to marry your son? Well, then what should I do to get you to forgive me? Shall I come to you and get on my hands and knees and beg? Will that be enough to make you happy? Well, if you happened to do that for me, you might get a better understanding of the kind of trash you really are. Well, it doesn't matter now. I don't want to see you ever again, Geoff. Please hold on, Chairman. Can you please listen to my side of the story? Hey, can you please do something about this? I never actually knew you were the daughter of the chairman. What are you talking about? I'm asking you to make the chairman understand my side of things. I never meant any harm back then. I was just thinking a bit too much about Ben and, well... Just for right now, get your mom to understand me. Understand you? My mom understands you and your intentions clear as day. Right now, she believes for some reason that I actually punched you back then. You were just talking out of your butt saying that. I am not. You punched me in the face, and so I told my mom about it. Well, that's alright, though. I have that recording of what had happened, so stop trying to change the past and just prepare yourself. Huh? I'm taking you to court, Geoff. And I've already made a victim's report of what you've done to me. And I believe the police will begin to investigate the case here soon. W wait a minute. That's going way too far. I'm trying to keep all of this within the family. No matter what you try and say to me, I'm taking you to court. That's the whole reason I recorded us in the first place. Then that means you're fine with never getting to see my son again, right? Excuse me? Why would that happen after taking you to court? Did you hear me? He is my son, and he is my property. I plan to have him become the next CEO of this company. So if you're going to take me to court, then you better give me my things back. Well, Ben has said that he's never going to see you again. No frickin' way. That man respects me more than anyone else in this world. All you've been trying to do is brainwash my son. Weren't you the one brainwashing him this whole dang time? You used your authority as his dad to take complete control of his life and never let him make his own choices. Perhaps it's time you start thinking about how he feels before you go and take everything that means anything to him away. Shut the hell up. What does a fatherless baby like you know what a father should be like? Me having only my mother around to raise me has nothing to do with this. I was at least able to be loved by my mom while she was still around caring for me at home. 
and she's taught me a lot, and still does. And I've done the same. I've given him all the love he needs, and that's why he's an elite. I made sure to raise him the way I did so he could be happy and powerful. We all know that being an elite is the only way to be happy in this world. Well, Ben's happiness is achieved by being around people that love him and allow him to live a simple and calm life. And he's grown to hate you using the words elite and loser in the house. He's literally saying that he's happier anywhere besides being near you now. But is that right? I'm sure you would never have known that, right? And the reason for that is simple. You never loved Ben. Rather, you just saw him as a piece of property that you could use to make yourself look better as a man. What the hell do you know? Right? Of course, I don't know crap about someone like you. The only thing I do know, though, is that compared to my mom, you are like the plague. <laughs> you are nothing more than a mother's girl. <laughs> Saying it just like you're still in middle school. Stop it, Geoff. You really are not in the position to fight back anymore. For Christ's sakes, you're nothing. Hey, please, can you come back to me? I'll promise to never step out of line again. Geoff, do you think you can stop trying to talk to me? At this point, you and I are complete strangers. Please, all of my family has cut ties to me and my wife got up and left me here all alone. And as for work, I haven't been able to find any company willing to hire me. And that's what you get. That life you're living now suits you perfectly. Well, I've thought about and learned from everything now. Just give me one last chance, please. I really want to see Ben again. All right, then. I'm sure you're just trying to get money from us now that you can't borrow anymore, right? Huh? I already know, Geoff. For the past few months, you've felt sorry for yourself and have proceeded to go out late at night to play on the streets. And the story about you spending $200,000 in a single night is really buzzing on social media. You even pay people to call you CEO still because that's the only thing making you happy, right? You, you even know about that? Geoff, you have nothing to offer me or my family. All you do is push others down so that you can continue to hang on to your pride, even going as far as to ruin other people's happiness. And now that you're in a time of desperation, you are trying to get any kind of help there is, but only as long as you still feel on top. But you are a disgrace, and nobody wants you around them anymore. What the? As a parent, as a husband, and even as a member of society, you are a disgrace who will never be wanted. And I do not want myself or those that I care about being around you. I have really thought about everything that's happened and learned my lesson. Do you really think it's okay to say such heartless things like that to someone who's already been through enough? You've been through enough? Well, if you've really gone through enough to learn from your mistakes, then where is my apology? Huh? You said terrible things about me, as well as assaulted me, yet I have not heard a single apology from you. Huh, I feel like I've apologized already for that. No. You made a poor attempt to apologize to my mom about that, but still haven't said anything to me. I always thought that those who had really gone and learned their lessons start by apologizing for what they've done. Well, it doesn't matter much now. I'd love for you to continue living in that world you call hell. What? Well, what about Ben? What's happened with him? I want to talk to my son now. You've read that letter from him by now, right? What did he say in that letter? He said the next time I come around to you guys, he'll make me pay. I'm sure that's hard for you to understand, but what he means is for you to stay away. So please respect his wants and leave us alone. I know that you've never been good at respecting him, but your life depends on it this time. So make this the last thing you can be good for and stay the hell away. Why? I think it'd be okay for you guys to at least forgive me a little. Right now, I'm super close to even losing my own house, 
and having to live on the streets. No matter what you say to me, I've made my choice and it will not be changed. I'm like my mom, Geoff, a stubborn woman. After that, I blocked Geoff's phone number and since then have not heard from him again. In his case, he was surrounded by loads of debt and lost his house to the bank. And when he went begging for someone to help him, there wasn't a soul around willing to give him a hand. He also lost all connections to his family and his wife divorced and ran away from him. He lost his job as the CEO and now has a very difficult time finding any work besides part-time gigs. With all of that pressure crushing his own rotten soul, he ran and ran far from the city we were all in, off to somewhere nobody knows. There are some rumors that maybe he borrowed money from loan sharks and that he was abducted by them when he never paid them back in time. But no matter what the truth may be for his disappearance, I'd like to know because a man with his kind of fragile pride must be in shambles. As for me in my life, I was able to buy a brand new house and both Ben and I have been living there starting our new life together. And in Ben's case, he took over the role as CEO from his dad and is now being supported with the help of my mom, making his next year for the company look outstanding compared to when his dad ran the place. Ben was also able to forget a lot of the horrible memories he had of his dad and didn't feel as much spite towards him, which is a relief for me. Now he has his job as the CEO to focus on and that's really helped him get over his dad. I'm so glad that I get to be with Ben now and that he's even more happy. And knowing that he no longer has to struggle with his dad has made me even happier.